in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed John, John chapter 17 and verse 3 says, And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. One more time, I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart, that my everything cries for you. Lord, I pray that you give me an encounter tonight. My everything cries for you. Kali shaba sobrande gebalatos. Enebeke po shalakra gabedeke tosiata. You are my life. You are my relevance. You are my hope. I build my life and my destiny upon you. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my everything. Give me an encounter tonight. lift me up take me higher let me encounter your presence your spirit afresh for in Jesus name we pray for in Jesus name we pray The house of God is a place and remains a place for encounters. That when we come, we meet the God of the Bible. We encounter even Jesus, the son of the living God. Hallelujah. And it's important for you to not get distracted. I know that, you know, when we come, we meet family and friends. But especially when the word comes, your attention must be on Jesus. Because one word that comes from the Lord that is received in your spirit and understood will transform your life forever. Hallelujah. Father, help us tonight. We submit to your wisdom and we declare that you will bless our hearts tonight. In Jesus' matchless name we've prayed. God bless you. Please be seated. Welcome to the house of God. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to make up your mind afresh tonight that you will not only be a spectator, but that you will be an active partaker of all that God is doing especially in this house. You can make up your mind and say my portion as far as God's prophetic word is concerned. I insist that my portion must come to me. As far as the knowledge of God is concerned, as far as the results that you command that bring him glory. And this will require you to be very intentional about receiving the word. You're not going to be careless over the word and then expect an excelling life. It does not happen that way. You have heard me say it and it bears repeating again that God's method is always his word. God's method is his word. His method for lifting is his word. His method for transformation, his method for deliverance is his word. He sent forth his word and the Bible says his word he led them and delivered them from their destruction. Tonight you have come to hear, to see, to receive into your spirit. May your portion not elude you in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, Paul was teaching his son in the gospel, Timothy, and he made a very interesting statement. He said, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? God now, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? Two very profound desires in the heart of the Father. Number one, that all men be saved. But then he takes it a step further that they should not just stand at the gate of the kingdom, but that they come into the knowledge of the truth. Who will have all men saved and have the ones who are saved now to progress in their work until they come into the knowledge of the truth. Truth is very powerful. The Bible has so many things to say about truth. Jesus himself said, I am the truth. I am the way, he said, I am the truth and the life. I am the way, I am the truth and the life. I am the way, I am the truth and the life. Truth here does not just mean a correct information. No, it's beyond just a correct information. I am reality personified. Are we together now? He says, no man cometh to the Father except by me. So when we come to the house of God like this, among the many things that happen to us is a communication of truth. The Bible tells us that the signature characteristic of the truth is that it sustains the power to liberate. He says, and ye shall know the truth. He says, and the truth shall make you free. That means if it does not make you free, it is not the truth. And unfortunately, please listen, unfortunately, there are many believers with so much accumulation of spiritual information without the corresponding liberty that should come from them. Are we together now? For such people, the Bible says, ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. That means when you begin to discuss along the lines of many areas in the kingdom, they would quote verses correctly so. They will share thoughts and ideas correctly so. Except that when you look at their lives in light of what they claim to know, there is no corresponding liberty. Ye shall know the truth. And it says if it is the truth indeed, it will make you free. It will make you free. That means I know you have found the truth when I do not see bondage in that area again. If you are still in bondage in that area, you have not found the truth. Or you are in the process of exploring the truth. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It didn't say ye shall know an information. Mm -mm. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth here, of course, talks of scripture. Sanctify them by thy truth. It says thy word is truth. So when you understand the truth, please listen already. By the time you understand the truth, as far as the various areas of your life and your Christian adventure is concerned, at the end of all that, all that you will be left with is liberty. Liberty that becomes so compelling that your life becomes a praise to the nations. It becomes a consolation to you. This is why you are here tonight. That every time you come, expect liberty because what you are hearing is the truth. That means you are not just writing or listening. Whilst you are listening, you should be looking at that area of bondage and expecting to be free from it. Are we together now? Yes. The dimension of truth that comes is the dimension of liberty that God is bringing for you. You should be able to receive it. In the name of Jesus, I will not be at this level again. Light has come. Truth has come. The word has come. And the assignment of the Holy Spirit is to breathe upon that truth. 
and add power to that truth so that when it leaves the altar here and comes to you it does not just enter your ear as an information while your ear does the hearing the power of God moves past your hearing to the, your destiny and begins to search for the areas that must be corrected this is the assignment of the word in partnership with the Holy Spirit are we learning already so when you come to the house of God expect to hear truth and let me tell you this the Bible says to receive with meekness the engrafted word you know what meekness is the quality of humility malleability open-heartedness many times believers come to God but they come with their preconceived ideas already from wherever it came from and sometimes it is very difficult for us to be malleable enough so when the word of God is coming sustaining the power to transform sustaining the power to change you find out that a believer can be seated having old ideas, wrong ideas, even demonic ideas. And now the word of God is coming in all its strength, its might and the ability to liberate. But because we are unwilling to give up those wrong ideas, those old ideas, we remain loyal to ideas that are unscriptural and do not work. I tell you again that if it is truth, it must make you free. If it does not make you free, it's time to reconsider that orientation. Hallelujah. This is very important. I am greatly burdened by many believers who are faithful congregants. They attend church Sunday service, midweek services, prayer meetings, but then with time, you cannot see the excellency of this divine life finding expression in them. Do you know, I sense that there is a growing frustration among believers. And I'm hoping it does not get to a point where it translates to rebellion against church and the things of God. Because nobody will camp indefinitely around an environment where you continue to exercise a lot of physical and spiritual energy without corresponding growth, corresponding transformation, and corresponding results. Nobody was designed to camp indefinitely around an atmosphere of failure. Are we together now? The consolation that comes to us as believers is that whilst we serve God and we spend time investing in the word that there be a commensurate advancement there are results that must show in our lives and if our lives become indefinitely bankrupt of result it will deflate our passion you will no longer be serious about the things of God well let me just go for the sake of it but you are there and you are not there again hallelujah this is very important. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that the life that we have received, this divine life, this Zoe life, this God life that we have received, if you are saved, you are born again. Scripture assures you that you have right now within your spirit, the life of God and the Bible describes that life in many ways it calls it abundant life it calls it an invincible life are we together now yes we have been called to a life of victory we have been called to a life that reflects the multifaceted power and wisdom and the grace of God remember in Ephesians chapter 3, when you read verse 10, the Bible says to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by you and me, the ecclesia, the church, the manifold. The word manifold here is multifaceted, multidimensional wisdom of God. When you back down to chapter 2 and verse 10, chapter 2 and verse 10 says we are his workmanship created in Christ his workmanship the tools that he uses to reveal himself created in Christ unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them if this is true 
then it must be made manifest in my life and it must, be, it must be made manifest in your life so know it for a fact that the life that we have received is not a life of defeat it's not a life of failure are we together now find a way of convincing yourself that i have when i was delivered from the kingdom of darkness like the bible says into his kingdom the kingdom of his dear son that translation had a destiny implication that you have not just been called from darkness to light from foolishness to wisdom from a life of misery and failure into a life of excellence but that the bible says that we should show forth the excellence of him that has called us from out of darkness into his marvelous light he says you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth is the greek word doxazo i mean the the, 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 the word is doxazo to show forth a display of the praises of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light we have been called to a life of victory i will never accept any teaching that seems to make me comfortable with a defeated life i do not believe that not now not never are we together I believe that when I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, there was a destiny implication. Listen, we need to restore value to what the life of God carries because it looks for many people that the only hope, the only advantage that comes with the Zoe life they have received is life after death or life beyond death. No, no, no. Are we together now? A victorious life here and now culminating to a life of victory and excellence even after now and beyond this realm this is the life you have received very very important settle it tonight that i have been called into a victorious life when i gave my life to jesus regardless what is happening now listen listen satan is a master of the sense realm so whilst you are making these confessions of faith or while you are allowing this orientation to sink into you satan begins to use all the things that are around you to say you better not lie to yourself whilst you are talking now there are bills your children are going haywire your life is scattered like the dear sister who shared her testimony your marriage is scattered and when you see all these things you come back to the realm of the flesh it's true it's true it's true but you must believe by the power of the Holy Ghost you must believe that this life you have received is an invincible life it's an indestructible life it's not the God kind of life It's God's very life it's not the kind is his very life the bible calls us partakers of his divine nature are we together now yes according as his divine power he says hath given us all things that partake unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue it says whereby hath he given us this exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust so you have to realize that god in his mind in his thinking at the back of his mind administering that life to you is upgrading you to a life upgrading you to his realm no wonder paul would teach us that we are seated in christ this is not just some pentecostal jamboree it's a spiritual reality that if you believe you now give it room to begin to manifest in your life don't say apostle it has not yet manifested it is the believing first then it begins to manifest there will never be a manifestation until there is a believing are we together now the life of God in a believer has a destiny implication I wrote here the manifestation of the divine and victorious life watch this now the manifestation of the divine and victorious life depends on our knowing the truth and engaging the truth as truthful as it is that we've been given the victorious life in Christ, the manifestation of the divine and victorious life, the manifestation of the divine and victorious life depends on our knowing the truth and then it depends on our engaging the truth. Please do not forget this. 
That means this victory that is captured in this life that we have received will never find expression in your life and my life until we know the truth and then engage the truth that we know. Please say, know the truth. One more time, shout it. Say, know the truth. Then say, engage the truth. Know the truth. Engage the truth. Listen, if I spend the rest of my life as a believer in failure, defeat, are we together? Under the yoke of demons and curses and all kinds of things, it does not change the fact that the life I received is a victorious life. Are we together now? The diagnosis will be that I refuse to explore the knowledge of the truth or I refuse to obtain grace to engage the truth that I know. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Now that you know these things, saying I know, I know, does not produce results. The first thing is you must eradicate ignorance by pursuing exact spiritual knowledge. Then when you find it, you obtain grace because no man can do without the engracing of the spirit. The value of his grace is to power that knowledge to see that you walk in keeping with the conditions that release the life that is captured in that knowledge. Do you understand me so far? So many believers live defeated lives. We sing songs, we make confessions, we jump around, we pray and sweat for hours, but you cannot see the corresponding victory. It makes the believers experience an ugly sight to the world. It makes people want to run away from God because the templates that we're selling to the world is a very irritating template. Dissipating energy in study, dissipating energy in prayer, being faithful in church activities with no corresponding result that brings glory to the name of the Lord. Sooner or later, you will be as frustrated as those who are watching you. Are we together? Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, it's an uncomfortable truth, but you have to admit it that if there is an aspect of your life that is not yet revealing the glory of God I have taught you here that the glory of God is connected to his patterns that when you walk in keeping with any divine patterns you now sustain the authorization to release that dimension of glory in your life there are many many believers that are not interested in finding consolations to their Christian experience by commanding victories and results that bring glory to the name of the Lord. The manifestation of the divine and victorious life depends not just on what God has said, it depends on your knowing the truth like the Bible says and then obtaining grace from God to consistently engage the truth that you know. Hallelujah. I wrote something down here and I wanted to listen and then write. I said the average believer's challenge, the average believer's challenge is the kind and the quality of spiritual orientation he or she has been exposed to. The average believer's challenge lies in the kind and the quality of spiritual orientation he or she has been exposed to that means the limitation of my christian experience is not is not a limitation in terms of god's power or god's ability but oftentimes it is the limit of the spiritual orientation i have received the quality of the spiritual orientation that i have been exposed to i give you an instance if you were never taught look up please if you were never taught that God restores, you will find out that your life will be bankrupt of restoration, yet that possibility is in the dealings of God with men. Are we together? If you are not taught that longevity is the heritage of the saints, if you are not taught that God's destiny for you is to be above and not beneath, if you are not taught that your life has been bought with a price, that you live unto God, that you are an ambassador pursuing the interests and the purposes of the kingdom, you can live a very, very a spiritually useless life. Just looking for what to eat, looking for how to make ends meet, as we call it, and never doing anything that is of that is eternal in context. 
simply because you are not taught so your spiritual orientation matters that means the body of information that you receive from church from women and women of god it is the reason why you see me challenge men and women of god that we must upgrade our understanding because our limitation is what we impart to those who sit before us that means there will be a widespread if i decide to be limited in an area and i'm too proud or too lazy are we together to contend for light in that area i will program my limitation upon you as you listen to me every day you will find out that my lopsidedness becomes imparted to you so that the areas have refused to receive results because i am teaching you from the lens of my limitation and this is what we have all across the body of christ respectfully speaking so there is a widespread communication of truth that is laced with a lot of gaps and limitations and sometimes we teach it with such pride there is almost no hope for correction i know this this is how it works yet the result is not showing and members shout amen to that error they shout amen to that limitation and they leave the church and execute that error as exact as they were taught only to program another cycle of pain may god open your eyes in the name of jesus christ the assignment of the teaching priest is to bring you light the truth of scripture line upon line precept upon precept that empowers you you know how to move from victory to victory are we together second corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 i believe it says now thanks be to god give us that scripture which always caused us to triumph in christ and make it manifest the servo of his knowledge by us in every place thanks be to god which caused us always to triumph first corinthians 15 57 it says now thanks be to god which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. These are scriptures that attest to the fact that our lives should not be mediocre, defeated lives. And there is no theology under any guise that should endorse the believers living in defeat and victory. No. Or, or defeat and, and mediocrity and failure. We have been called to a life of victory. It's as simple as that challenges may come it is not unusual my bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but it leaves us with an assurance that the lord delivered him from them how many all are we together now what we largely have as believers is what i call isolated truths isolated truths. so we have pockets and pieces of the truth they are not lies, but they are isolated truths. And you see, when you know how God works, please let me your attention. When you know how God works, you will know immediately that finding a truth or a piece of the truth will not automatically culminate to victory. Are we together now? So we have pieces of truths and those truths are valid so we keep having little results here and there but they are not coordinated to produce the kind of victory that compels the world to see the glory of god in our lives because they are pieces and pockets of truth let me show you a scripture a scripture that really really blessed me romans 1 20 romans 1 20. let's read together if you can see it projected ready read for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we are... Let me break this down for you so you understand what Paul is saying here. Paul is saying, even if you are not spiritual, God was so determined to help you understand his ways that he programmed a parallel of the realm of the spirit in your environment. That means everything that works physically is a parallel of how the realm of the spirit works. So that if you claim you do not have the intelligence or the, the, the stamina to access the realm of the spirit, you can use biology, you can use nature, you will still learn of the ways of God. 
Are you getting that scripture there? It says so that we are without excuse. His, 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 his insistence that we understand his ways. He made sure that he created a parallel. For instance, if you do not understand the Trinity, how they function, you can look at a tree that the Bible says you are. You see the root, you see the vine, you see the branches with the fruit. Are we together now? Everything that holds power and force on earth has a trinity expression water ice liquid vapor time yesterday today tomorrow that you can use nature you can use biology you can use sociology and you will still learn the ways of god with the accuracy of someone who accessed the prophetic that so that whether you choose to be serious or not, as far as knowing the ways of God is concerned, you should not be with any excuse. This is very powerful. So, if you are in doubt as to how God's victory systems work, how his dominion system work, all you need to do is look at your world and look at the things that he created because he used the same formula in creating them. And when I was studying for this, I was so, I was so blessed because it ministered to me. It just showed me immediately where the believer's problem is. The believer's problem is a problem of isolated truth. That the truth has not been able to come together systemically to produce wholesome victory and let me your attention for a few minutes i want us to explore the human body as a case study since the bible tells us that we can use nature and the things that god has created physically to understand his ways there are many many truths that are powerful and many of us have received them but in isolation, they will not produce wholesome victory. I give you an example, confession. Confession. The average Pentecostal charismatic of the spoken word, you see. And many of us have been trained and mentored to not play with our speakings. And I have taught you that. And that is a fact. But if confession is the only truth you have and you know, you are going to be disappointed because it was supposed to be part of a larger system that produces the wholesome victory of the believer. Are we together now? Isolating confession as the only parameter required for victory will eventually end you in frustration. Another example, warfare and deliverance. Africa understands this very powerfully. And if you're in this ministry, you understand this very powerfully. I believe in warfare and deliverance, but not as the single and only key that brings wholesome victory for the believer. That would be error. Are we together now? That warfare and deliver, de deliverance has its place and its jurisdiction. It becomes profitable only when it is connected to a larger body of truths. Please understand what I'm teaching you tonight. Isolating it and just believing or teaching that deliverance and warfare even prayer is the one and only key no you are going to be programming a lot of pain that will be waiting for you in the future is someone learning number three for instance don't write just listen is hard work i'm giving you a lot of isolated truths as a case study hard work there are people who do not believe in prayer, do not believe in demons, for instance, do not believe in whatever it is. They just believe in hard work. Work hard. And then we use stories like there are great people, Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and all these guys. They work themselves out and look what they've been able to do. Hard work is the key. You are right. But if in isolation to other bodies of truth, you are bringing another version of error. Are we learning now? I hope that as you are listening to me, God is showing you where the problem is. That it's not that you are in complete ignorance, but you've, you've not been able to synergize these truths. For others, character and moral excellence. And as wonderful as it is, because in society, the moment you are an advocate of character and moral excellence, society seems to have a heightened respect for you. 
and that is correct but there are many people who believe that just having character or moral excellence alone will magically make everything work out for you in life so you have sincere people they will not steal they will not sin they love God with all their hearts and there is nothing for instance our missionaries for instance sincere advocates of the gospel you see nothing working in their lives the trouble here is that their children have been watching that mistake for a long time and the children are already making secret vows I will never be like this person and if we do not correct this a generation is going to come that will stand upon the grave of their parents and curse God to his face are we learning so I choose deliverance and warfare that is my key Another person says, I choose character and moral excellence. Another person says, I don't believe in all these your things. I'm going to confess the word. That's my own. There are none of them, because you can see um, little, little results from those experiences. Meaning there is the power of God backing it. But it was never supposed to be in isolation. Now, the human body, I wrote here, is the most visible clue to how God designed the believer's life to function. Let me take it again. The human body is the most visible clue to how God designed the believer's life to function. Let me take it one last time. The believers, the, the believers, the human body now, biology, bi biology now, I'm speaking biology. The human body is the most visible clue to how God designed the believer's life to function. That means if you can understand how the body functions, then you can understand how the believer should function. You can understand how victory is wrought. Look at me please, ladies and gentlemen. You are seated here because you are alive and you woke up this morning. Am I right on that? You most likely stretched yourself, took your bath, ate, laughed, did all kinds of things, walked, and did so many things to find yourself here now you are listening to me there are many things you take for granted but medical science will teach us that just to be able to listen to me you will have to examine the many things that are working in your body to make listening and understanding happen are we together there are people for instance who have dementia it's a condition where they forget things am i right on that and yet those people are not dead they are alive but a component of their life is wrong and look how much it can affect them there are people for instance who have stroke a part of them may be paralyzed because of something that happened to their brain they are not dead yet they are incapacitated in many ways now i want you to imagine the parallel of that in the spirit how many people carrying spiritual dementia they are born again how many people carrying spiritual epilepsy why because an aspect that was supposed to make for their overall health was deadened through pride through wrong mentorship or through complete ignorance have you had cases for instance now respectfully speaking where a patient is grounded and the only thing that moves in the patient is his eyes have you seen that kind of thing the hands cannot move the limbs cannot move and yet the person is alive he can't respond yet he's hearing you imagine that kind of pain some of us have had our loved ones go through that thing and you can imagine the pain looking at a human being an adult do you know there are many like that spiritually the only thing moving is their eyes. The only thing is that you saw them give their lives to Christ. Spiritual hands not working. No progress. No nothing. The assignment of tonight's teaching is to bring permanent deliverance to that condition. If you believe that, shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. I wrote here, the human body is composed of living cells medical science will tell us the human body is composed of living cells that are now organized into tissues into organs and systems this is what medical science tells us that what you call a human body is a composite of living cells that have been organized into tissues organs and systems 
I did a little study while preparing my notes and I just want to make reference to a little material that I consulted just to help us understand how this works. Because in the name of Jesus, the gates of your destiny must be opened and your life must become a praise to the nations in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, in studying, I came across several materials that I consulted and I was just trying to see how many systems are in the human body just as a way of showing uh, and, and of course the references are relative I'm not teaching professionally I'm just trying to communicate a point now watch this I, I read here that the human body has at least nine systems grouped together and I'll run through them for you you may write or you may listen in any case just make sure it enters your spirit are we together now number one here is called the integumentary system that composes of the skin and associate structures and the assignment is to protect the body from harmful microorganisms that means the integumentary system that is composed of the skin your skin as you know so that is a system do you know that there are people who are alive and you've seen them with skin infections is that a good sight to behold are we together i have prayed for many people who have had acute breakouts of boils or some kind of skin infection you know maybe eczema whatever it is and sometimes you see lovely people but that is not a good sight simply because one system was faulty can i continue number two here is the musculoskeletal system or you can call it your skeletal system mixed made up of your muscles and your skeletal system consult the doctors if you are in any i'm not here to spell i'm here to teach just get what i'm telling you praise the name of the lord the musculoskeletal system watch this now other references will say the muscular system and then the skeletal system it's written here that is composed of the skeletal muscles and for an adult we are told that there are about 206 of them you must listen in the name of jesus and the bible says that the assignment watch this now don't be distracted the assignment is to move the body and to protect the, the the internal organs imagine your organs without the bones and the skeletal system some of us are learning now for free that these bones that you have looked down on when the bible says he keepeth his bones and none is broken it is because it has the assignment to protect you are we together now that is just two out of nine are you ready for number three the respiratory system is composed of the breathing passages lungs muscles for respiration it obtains air and the oxygen necessary for cellular metabolism is written here now the respiratory system this is one system alone do you know you can isolate the respiratory system and by focusing on it it looks like no other system is useful again because if you stop breathing you will die but there is a way to die while you are still breathing am i right on that mm -hmm. number four this is koinonia Number four, are you ready? Thank you. Let's pay attention. The circulatory system, the circulatory system composed of the heart, the blood, the blood vessels, and it circulates a transport fluid throughout the body. So it's responsible for circulating blood, oxygen, and you know, whatever is needed, the circulatory system. There are people who are alive, but the moment this system is found wanting, number one, the kind of money you will pay to correct this condition. You are still breathing, and yet your entire life's earning can be invested to correct this with no 100% guarantee. The circulatory system. Can I give you number five? the digestive system my medic is that medical people or koinonia people thank you god bless you even if i don't score a i will not score f i reject f in the name of jesus 
the digestive system. Are we together? Composed of the mouth, esophagus, stomach, intestines, and it breaks down food into usable substances which are then absorbed from the blood or the lymph. This is what is written here. Are you seeing that now? How many people have gone to the hospital simply because something was wrong with their digestive system? Are they dead? No. Are they breathing? Yes. Can they hear? But they are still not all right. And they were, they were so not all right, they had to leave their house to the hospital. Are we together now? Ask the doctors. The hospital is broken into many, many sections that are dealing with many, many parts of the human body. You would think the hospital would just have a, an ICU and then a, a labor ward and that's all. But there are many other parts dealing with the human body. Look at the expensive machines that we invent simply because we are hoping that with advancement in technology we will rescue just one part of the human system. What makes you believe that by ignoring a particular dimension in the spirit you will have wholesome victory? I'm helping you using biology to understand what you may have been missing. So for some of us, maybe from the day you got born again, that spiritual digestive system has not even been working. number six the excretory system excretory system composed of the kidneys remember kidneys ureters urinary bladder and all of that it removes toxic nitrogen compounds and other wastes from the blood look up please have you seen a patient crying to raise money for kidney transplant do you know how much it is? I'm not a medical doctor, but you go to a medical stand, they will tell you. It is not, maybe Nigeria Naira should be within the range of maybe 7 to about 12 or 15 million Naira. Just for a kidney transplant. That is when you do find a donor and then it does not come with a 100% guarantee. The assignment of the excretory system is to remove wastes. To remove wastes from your body there are people who have died simply because their kidneys packed up and every other thing related to that system number seven the nervous system the nervous system composed of the sensory organs the brain the spinal cord and the nerves and here's what it does it transmits integrates and analyzes sensory information and it carries impulses to effect the appropriate muscular or glandular responses in the body this is what i'm reading i didn't write this credit to medical science are we together now nervous system how many people look at you and say who are you and you are saying me your friend they are alive but something has happened no coordination again are we still here brain damage spinal cord issues i have prayed for many many people and i say this without exaggeration many many people who, who have, have literally been grounded and left for dead because something happened to their spine and there was a complete damage, completely. Number eight. It's written here, the endocrine system. The endocrine system is composed of the hormone secreting glands and tissues that provide chemical communication network for coordinating various body processes for instance hunger the impulses of hunger the impulses of stress and all of that did you know that if you do not have that endocrine system you will not even know if you were hungry you will not even know if you were satisfied what of you know several other things as as minute as these things are they add to the human being you see standing nine the reproductive system we are struggling today counting how many people are on earth because of this one system. The efficiency of this one system. Look what it has done. Hmm. 
If you are with me, say amen. amen. So I just I just did a, a bit of, of, of biology just to help you understand this reference here allows for about nine nine of the systems that make up the human body. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who have family doctors and what you call a medical checkup, when the doctor comes, he checks you against these things. Am I right on that? There are others that will require you going to the hospital. You have all kinds of advanced tests to ascertain the health of these systems. When a doctor says you are healthy, what he's saying is that you largely have been examined across these systems and you've, your body has been found to be functioning well or within the range that they define as healthy. Am I right on that? Now you understand Romans 1.20 that the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen and being understood by the things which are made. Please look up. I hope you know that no man assisted God in the building of man. It was exclusively a product of his intelligence. That means anything that wants to become an organism must subscribe to the same law he used to build the body. No wonder the church is called the body of Christ. Are we together now? Now, I want you to think with me for a moment that all the truths that we know or should know are responsible for making the various spiritual systems that make up our lives work. For instance, understanding the laws of prosperity and the economic system of the kingdom. You can liken it to any of these nine systems. You can be healthy and strong. You can be a missionary with character, love God, and yet that part of your life fails and it can cripple your life and push you to the corridors of compromise. Are we together now? Yes. So in contending for the victorious life, it is very, very important that we make reference to the human body and see how God meticulously worked out systems that the skeletal system alone has about 206 bones, the skeletal structure that make an adult. If God went that far, now do you notice something from this description that all the systems, although they are powerful, they do not all carry equal value. Is that true? Some systems and organs are more delicate than others. That means in order of priority, the doctor or the consultant will pay attention to seeing to the health of a particular organ even before the other. I'm aware that there are doctors who may have a patient that requires multiple treatment and professionally they have been taught to focus on the vital organs that keep the person alive sometimes they may have to dress the person he will go and heal for months then return back am i right on that to carry out the other procedures this is listen biology should help us understand the ways of god show me a man who has promoted his digestive system alone and is alive and strong show me a man who has promoted his respiratory system alone and downplayed digestion and downplayed his neurological system. But why do we now do this in the body of Christ? Why do we now do this spiritually? I choose prosperity alone. Anything that has to do with prayer, I'm not interested. Or I am a prayer man, I'm a deliverance man. Anything that has to do with impartation of wisdom is unnecessary. That deception I'm announcing to you, is, it comes from the pit of hell. And it is the reason why there is no wholesome victory in the life of believers. Hallelujah. So many of us right now are likened to patients who can be healthy and yet there's something that is wrong. And God desires to bring wholesome victory. Wholesome victory in our lives. Wholesome victory in our lives. That you can be like someone who is so healthy and vibrant. While we were in the United Kingdom having the conference, one of the testifiers, a dear woman, and when she stood to testify, she said she was 65 years. And when I looked at that woman, if you were told she were 35, probably she's even following now. 65 years, alive, agile. I've seen people who you have a, a daddy, daddy Onugogu, who comes here. Now, I think this year he will be 86. And yet he comes strong, moving by himself, 
only once or so or never gone to a hospital and his wife who is 10 years younger 75 when I go for programs in the East they show up together healthy and alive yet there's another person 31 and you have to be told that this person is not that old I'm not being sarcastic I'm just saying whether you look young or look old it's not God's fault it's something you allow to happen to you is that true right now there is a heightened awareness the wellness industry is programming you know and pushing organic living there are many of you that's your business line you can tell us how to be healthy how to be strong that is the same thing I'm doing what you are doing biologically now is what I'm doing I'm I'm saying that there is a problem who knew before that there are certain foods that when you eat could accelerate your death rate am I right on that spiritually there are certain revelations that if you receive or don't live alone they will fast track your defeat it is true there are things about God there are things about Satan there are things about life that must come under divine scrutiny so that there be an editing but I love the person who taught me that's not the issue even if it was Joshua Selman who taught you let God be true and let every man a liar be a liar our loyalty to things that are maybe lesser truths or truths that are isolated or you know information that is not even truth we hold on to it this is all I've known and yet God is asking you tonight do you desire your tomorrow greater than your today then you must be willing to relinquish certain things when I receive advices from you know medical people and I, I have so many of them around my life they can advise and say listen take water do this do that do that that's the advice and sometimes how many of you know that you can see something you used to like or you still like and painfully so you remember the instruction that came from the consultant and you are there salivating hoping for a chance and you are saying I mean why did I meet this doctor to advise me I would have remained but you have a choice you can eat it and die or you can trust God for grace and leave it and then you leave ladies and gentlemen please hear me I'm pointing something powerful for you tonight that I'm hoping you understand Apostle, I saw my father love the Lord. He served the Lord with all his heart. But we had to go and eat in the house of certain neighbors. What kind of God is that? Uh, 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 let me answer you now. That is not a reflection of what God can do. It is a reflection of the human body again. And the inability to contend for wholesome health. Are we together now? That every time we allow a dimension of our body to not move forward, uh, the template we give the world can misrepresent God. So, if you have to learn God only from the lens of that missionary, what kind of God is this that has a missionary loving him with all his heart, serving him with all his heart, and yet the school fees of the children cannot be paid every time they are sending them back home, and then they come and they are praying, Oh God, will you not answer us? And yet there is an unbeliever giving scholarships to people under the same heaven. What kind of a God is that? It is not a description of God. It is a description of your state. Hmm. Hallelujah. So for instance, there are believers who are always praying, always praying, always, you know, casting out, binding something. And I'm not, a, I minister deliverance here, you see. But that's all they know. They will never sit down to learn the ways of God. And the devil has seen that there is a big gap. There are other aspects of their Christian life that has not been brought together. And so he keeps manipulating them and demons keep playing games around their destiny. And for a long time, after 10 years, they are still doing the same thing and not moving forward. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom. Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom, Jehovah, shalom, shalom, you're welcome in this place.
watch this how many of you have seen the athletes that win or footballers that play watch people who pack a stadium full to watch 22 players in a field there's none of those players that will be able to go to that field and command your attention if they are not healthy are we together now some of them with with advancement in technology now have opened us up to their training routine what makes them the champions that we celebrate and you can see they will show you their dieting they will show you their workout structure are we right on that and that that is what produced that basketballer or that footballer because of the results they have commanded we have now even gone into their private life to probe do you know that what they are doing is the scripture that says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and now say how are you doing this that when men say there is a casting down, yours is a lifting up and you tell them there is a system responsible for the empowerment of the saints. Do you know about it? And they say, I was never taught. Now you don't condemn them. You say, come, let me show you. And in one year, two years, like a patient who was sick, you have corrected that part of them. Now he becomes a pastor with integrity, but in addition to that, he's empowered economically to send his children to school. Or you find one who is doing well financially, but the knowledge of God is zero, character zero, and you tell him, listen, there is an aspect of the kingdom life you may be missing. Can I show you? And the person says, I thought money was everything. I was mentored to believe once you have money, whether you have character or not, it doesn't matter. And you tell him, no, there is a system in the kingdom. The absence of character, even with money, will bring a deficiency to your life. Can I show you? Now you open that person up. Now he becomes a prosperous person having character. Or a preacher who is very administrative and loves God. He can put things in place. But the principles of building people methodically to make people who are mighty and of stature is not there. And you bring him like Aquila and Priscilla and expound to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly. Now he does not just become a church administrator. He becomes a teaching priest indeed or one who is a sound teacher but the messages are full of propositions without the engracing to produce results god can heal no healing god can lift no lifting god can bless no blessing you are blessed in jesus name amen no results and you can bring the person and say sir there is a system of empowerment in this kingdom that even when you have knowledge there is another system like the human body have you been taught that say no i was just taught that once i have the word that's all he said no problem don't feel bad over the person who taught you he did his best but let me show you there is another system where you tarry in jerusalem until you are endued with power even after three and a half years of mentorship by jesus himself you still need a empowerment that man receives that impartation and by next Sunday when he goes there in the name of Jesus be healed and suddenly to his shock something has come upon my pastor he's no longer just that empty teacher what has been added the patient is now better the patient is now recovering as I'm teaching tonight, just imagine a patient in ICU and a doctor, this time not Joshua Selman, Jesus himself is fixing the many systems that are going wrong, that at the end of it, that patient will jump up, healthy digestive system, healthy respiratory system. Are we together? All the nine systems I listed, how could you be a failure under that condition of health? Thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. You believe what I'm sharing? Then another person says there are no demons anywhere. Well, forget about all those demons thing. There's no such thing as that. But you are seeing the classic signature of oppression in all its definition. That the fact that you believe that already is a successful plot of darkness on your mind. And then you can come and say listen. It is true that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, but there are dynamics to activating that truth. The same truth that brought us deliverance is the same truth that brought us healing. Yet there are believers who are still sick physically, including many preachers. That does not mean if you can still be sick as a preacher, sick as a man of God, what makes you believe you cannot be oppressed? 
it takes revelation there is a higher dimension but until you get there you must administer all the truths it is not a doctor's ultimate desire to remove a patient's appendix am i right on that it is not the doctor's ultimate desire to put some metals in a patient but those things become necessary processes if that's what will be involved to, for the survival of the patient this is what we do sometimes so even though in the beginning it was not so in managing people we deploy every scriptural mechanism that insists on their health Are we together? Apostle, I don't know what is happening to me. I don't believe in myself again. I'm depressed. There's this mental health. I want to go and commit suicide. You think that's just because there's no job? That's a spirit. That's a spirit. You know what it means to kill yourself? Where there are people begging for life, they will give up anything for life. Yet another person will go and hang himself on a tree and kill yourself or take drugs. It has to be a spirit. How many people testify and they will tell you a voice was telling me, kill yourself and die. The devil stopped them from hearing the Holy Ghost. Yet without training, they can hear a demon spirit. Are we together? The assignment of that is deliverance. That when you come by the word, that spirit, in the name of Jesus, we command that devil to leave. And when that devil leaves, then we can now start mentoring and building the person now. Are we together? Closing that door by giving you a renewed spiritual orientation. See who you are in Christ and then to help you to stand. Imagine if all the doctors now said, once you are a Christian, you are not admitted in the hospital because Christ has died for your sins. You know how many of us will be left? There are 2.6 billion Christians on earth now. About a billion of them are Roman Catholics according to statistics. And then, you know, all other sects spread the remaining that is left. 2.6 billion people, thanks to the ministry of doctors. So when you read the Bible, you will see that none shall say in Zion, I am sick. Yet go to, um, why do we have a medical stand? full of very excellent and exceptional doctors by the way and paramedics and medics why do we have such a stand when we believe in the power of god because of an expression of god's love and the insistence to attend to everyone at every level now there is a level you can attain unto in christ through growth and transformation are we together now yes there is such a level that you can stand and literally be immune you would have conquered the realm of defeat but it does not just happen by impartation man shall not live by bread alone but by every word is is a progression of growth that depends on your level of alignment the quality of the truth you are receiving and the longevity of your stay in his presence but while that happens there are medical doctors that midwife people and i'm telling you that we are alive today thanks to medical doctors Imagine the women who confessed scripture and said in the name of Jesus Christ, I will not have CS, I will have a normal delivery. But eventually the doctor said, you need to go through CS. Imagine if they refused and said, I will not do CS. They would have died for nothing. And some of you will not be here. Are we together? Are you, are you getting what I'm teaching you today? The human body is alive and victorious simply because of this so if i jump this jump alone can you tell me how many systems were healthy to have made this happen if my skeletal system alone was faulty i would not be able to jump as little as this is i've been holding the mic for a while now did you know that there are people their their neurological system is so broken they cannot even handle anything Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. My call for you is, what part of the kingdom truth have you ignored? And look at the effect. I'm giving you a medical parallel so that you will see. Could it be that something you ignored is why poverty seems to be ravaging your family? I don't believe the prophetic. Prophets and apostles are all liars and fake. No, 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 no. There might be issues in the body of Christ 
with the prophetic and the apostolic ministry but don't throw the baby under bad water you will be going through issues in life that only the prophetic can solve and because you have made up your mind that that system will not work for you you will be limited for years over something that can be corrected in just five minutes imagine if Saul continued to roam around to say he was going to look for the donkey by himself he probably would have died a beast in the, in the wilderness, would have eaten him for nothing. And he said, let's stop wasting this time. There is a man, a seer, whose word does not fall to the ground. As soon as he met Samuel, Samuel showed him the value of the prophetic. He said, go up, leave the issue that brought you here. I will tell you what is in your heart. Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance? And another chapter of his destiny opened. Imagine Samaria without Elisha. Imagine Jesus without John. Are we learning now? So, congratulations for all you have learned. And thank God for we men of God who continue to do our best. And for as long as God grants us grace, we'll continue to do our best to teach that which we know. But I beseech you by the message of God, that when you have an opportunity to contend for higher superior provable truths that you do not harden your heart doing yourself a disservice but that your heart be open the goal is not to say so 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 and so did not teach me well no that's not the idea but that we must be humble watch this now if i am a consultant say a bone a bone specialist that's my area of specialty with the whole description I've given you now imagine someone who comes to meet me and says um, dr. so-and-so I have a very serious problem with my kidneys I have a problem you know with the entire excretory system and I said well that's unnecessary the most important thing is make sure once your skeletal system is fine you are going to be all right do you think that patient is going to leave no So for me to admit that my area of professionalism, I'm not a consultant in everything. I'm a consultant, I'm a, okay, I'm a bone specialist. Now you tell the person, well, when it has to do with this, there are people who are graced and given that, that understanding here. I can only attend to you and recommend. And this has been my call, especially to we men and women of God. Let us not destroy God's people because of pride. We do not know everything. Stay in your area of excellence and call. Give your very best. But be open and let God's people find holistic truth and development. This is not just to allow people to be careless and roam around from pillar to post, but we must be honest. I know it's an uncomfortable truth, but we must get to a point where we admit that we do not know everything. There's, there's not, there, it does not reduce you. Are we together now? Yeah. There are many people who would have been healed today if only they were given a chance to see the value of healing. And sometimes, the way we act as men of God is the area we do not have grace for we trivialize. We say it's not necessary. No, it's... It, see, do you know after COVID... There are many pastors here and they will bear me witness do you know that after covid many pastors went under pressure because members were incapacitated financially till now there are pastors literally i have the privilege of speaking with so many people and they say apostle I'm, it's almost as if we're in trouble because members are saying we were downsized we don't have jobs man of god you told us that god is able to help can the church give us scholarship and the and the woman has five children hundred hundred thousand for one person but when the word of god came to empower them economically you told them don't worry the most important thing is love the lord and we misquote scriptures that say, don't worry about this, take no thought of what to eat without understanding what the scriptures were saying. By the privilege of God's grace and not to brag, I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility. I'm involved in the life of many families and many children, believe me. 
and I know how much is committed and invested literally daily and weekly to keep many families and many people alive and strong. And, so, and for most of these families, they are Christians. And you will be asking, okay, what was the system of mentorship they were exposed to? And why all these gaps? There are many young people now getting into fraud, internet fraud and the rest. And most of them are church people. And we're asking questions. They are praying in tongues. But while they are praying in tongues, they are about to cheat somebody in the night. Are we together now? Now listen carefully. And we may say it does not matter. Until the day the church starts grooming armed robbers. There are robbers that kidnap people and catch people and quote scriptures and even laugh. They are not ignorant people. It's just that there are systems we are ignoring in the body of Christ. And it's beginning to tell now. Artificial intelligence is taking over the place of employment. In the, many people are not prepared for the world that is coming in the next 5 to 10 years. Listen to what I'm telling you. Many believers will say it doesn't matter. I have God. God is all like, you are right. But do you know the dynamics of allowing the power of God to work in your life? There is a generation that will be exposed to the world that they do not know anything about. And I'm not talking of the next 20 years. The next 5 to 10 years, there will be casualties in the body of Christ if we do not restore wholesome knowledge that produces wholesome victories. So we're going to have a bunch of people who will truly, because you see the Bible says, for everyone that seeketh, findeth. There are people, the only thing they are seeking is prosperity. They are seeking the loss of the kingdom by fire, by force. And through diligence, they will find it. The trouble is, if the only thing they find is prosperity, when a man prospers and he does not have character, he becomes a weapon of mass destruction to himself and to society. Then there will be a group of frustrated people who love the Lord, character, loving Jesus with all their hearts. And yet you find out that nothing will work in their lives. And in pain they'll say, God, why did you do this to me? Other people were bribing, other people were doing all of that. And I avoided this because of my love for you. We've been shouting for a very long time. The wealth of the wicked is laid for the righteous. We've been saying these things since I was growing up. Till now, the wealthy people are getting wealthier and the church is suffering. We are suffering. We are getting into trouble. We are in debt. We are in all kinds of things. And those people sometimes watch with shock what we are saying. Because those things are true, but those statements are incomplete. The dynamics of the workings of those strategies we have not learned. Are we together? How about power? Sometimes we talk against herbalists and all of that. I would never promote evil and, you know, demonic things. But I'm saying that we, we say don't go to herbalists, don't go to the devil, don't do all of these things. Okay, I refuse to go to the devil and I've come to you, Joshua Selman. The truth is that I need you to help me. Things are not working in my life. And I say, well, things are not working just because you are not serious. And the person says, I'm a diligent person. What do you mean I'm not serious? As elaborators, what I'm saying is, this is speaking to the pain of many of you seated looking at me right now. There are many of you who already have accumulated frustration. You are just getting almost to a, a breaking point where it's as if, look at our young people and their disdain for church. There's not much of that happening because in Africa we still have, you know, our, you know, our moral fabric is still, is still intact to an extent. But you go across the world and you see empty churches that you find a church with 100 people and they're celebrating. They call that a crowd. And yet, a secular person or someone somewhere who is about to do something godless and from morning till night, people pack up theaters and pack up everything, celebrate, and we think it does not matter. Wait until a godless society takes over the helm of government. Then you will see what happens. Preachers are getting discouraged because even they themselves are not understanding why this thing is not working again. After preaching and writing books for many years, I cannot understand why this is working again. I thought the key was confession. I have confessed the word sincerely. I have done it with all my heart. What else is left? Oh, there is a lot that is left. 
I have walked in holiness and righteousness, you will say, loving the Lord sincerely with all my heart. What else is left? There is still a lot that is left. I've been diligent and hardworking. I sleep late in the night. I wake up early in the morning. I'm, I'm, I've given myself to trainings and, and the rest. What else is left? There is still a lot more that is left. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.